Hi, I wanted to go over day 12 of Thirsty by Jamie Morgan. Day 12 is thirsty to hear God's voice. There are lies the enemy wants you to believe, like I can't hear God's voice, or God speaks to so-and-so more than he does me. I ask God to speak to me, but he rarely does. The truth is this, God does speak to you. It isn't a lack of desire that stops Christians from achieving intimacy with God. Most Christians would love to have a deep love relationship with Almighty God. Often the hindrance is the perceived inability to hear his voice. It's difficult to have a close relationship with someone when you do all the talking. Two-way communication is at the heart of all intimate relationships. Jesus talks about this in John chapter 10 when he confirms this and says, The sheep recognize his voice. They know his voice. They listen to my voice. Always expect to leave the place of prayer and hear the voice of God. When you spend time with God, take a notebook and a pen. When you expect him to speak, you'll hear God's voice much more frequently. God's voice can be similar to the I spy game. He'll speak one clue at a time, one dream at a time, one impression at a time. He doesn't usually give us the entire picture, but just enough for us to know the next step. In doing so, he's building our faith and deepening our trust in him. If you've ever heard yourself saying any of these things, you've heard the voice of God. For instance, I felt impressed to walk to a different part of the store and met someone who needed prayer. Or I was looking for a job and ran into someone who told me about a company that was hiring. Or that's strange, I dreamt about that very same thing last night. Or I read my Bible and a scripture le leapt off the page. Or maybe you've said, I'm going through the most difficult trial ever, but I have the peace that passes all understanding. Don't be fooled into thinking that he'll speak to you the same way that he did the last time you were in the same situation. He won't. He'll probably speak in an entirely different way. His voice should sound like an impression or a knowing in your knower. He could speak through a dream, a vision, or through the wise counsel of someone else. He might communicate through a quickening of scripture, a worship song that suddenly comes to mind, or an open or a closed door. Shutting out distractions and keeping your heart free from anxiety, unforgiveness, and discouragement. Act like static on a radio. So those are necessary to hear God's voice regardless of the method that he utilizes. You want to just shut everything out and get quiet before the Lord. There's some guardrails of confirmation that maybe you've heard God's voice. Like it'll always line up with the word of God. God will never ask you to do anything that, that contradicts his word. In fact, the Bible is the primary way God speaks to his people. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Um, if you're unsure, ask those that are wiser in the Lord than you are. A God idea will grow stronger. A good idea will wane. God's directives will always require faith and courage. When you step out in faith to do what God has spoken, check your spirit. Do you have peace or do you have turmoil? Let the peace of God, or the lack thereof, be your umpire. Did you do the last thing God told you to do? He's not going to give you a new instruction until you have obeyed the last one. One encounter with God's voice can literally change your life forever. Let your Christian walk be revived by leaning into God's wondrous voice with eager anticipation.